Lecture 4. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the Virtual University's course on Business and Technical Communication. In today's lecture, we will be looking at audience analysis. Audience analysis basically means that you as a writer need to analyze who it is that you are writing for. As in every communication, there is a person who is doing the communication, who is giving out the message, sending the message and there is a person who is receiving the message. The person who is sending the message is you and the person who is receiving the message is your audience. And you as a sender need to be very aware of who your audience is. And the way you send your message will vary according to who your audience is and what their needs are. In this lecture, you will learn to target your audience by identifying audience type, characteristics and level of expertise. You will also determine your audience's needs by assessing their expertise and their purpose in reading the document. And you will also look at how to determine document den density. People read technical documents for different reasons and readers have varying levels of technical expertise. To be effective, technical writing must target its audience or audiences. Now, every type of uh, writing has a particular type of audience and technical writing has a particular type of audience as well. And later on in this lecture, we will look at what different types of audiences technical writing is catered for. You will target your audience by identifying your audience type and level of expertise and also your audience purpose in using the document. When we talk of audience type and the level of their expertise, we also need to keep in mind what is the purpose of those people in reading the document that we are writing because that purpose will also determine how we write that document or how we organize that document. And also we need to target our audience type by identifying the audience attitude towards both you and the content of your document. If the audience has a positive attitude towards you and your document, then you will need to write in a different form than if the audience has a negative or a skeptical attitude towards you and your document. अगर आपको ये अंदाजा है कि जो आपके पढ़ने वाले हैं वो आपकी बात को ज्यादा शौक से सुनेंगे या ज्यादा समझ समझेंगे आराम से या उसको ज्यादा पॉजिटिवली लेंगे तो फिर आप उस डॉक्यूमेंट को एक फर्क तरीके से लिखेंगे बिनिस्बत उसके कि अगर आपको ये अंदाजा हो कि जो आपकी ऑडियंस है वो कुछ रिजिस्ट करेंगे आपके डॉक्यूमेंट को एक्सेप्ट करने में क्योंकि अगर आपको ये अंदाजा हो कि वहाँ रेजिस्टेंस होगी तो फिर आप उसमें को जो लिखने में ऑर्गेनाइज करेंगे और जिस किस्म की लैंग्वेज यूज करेंगे वो कुछ मुख्तलिफ होगी ऑल दीज कंसिडरेशन विल इन्फ्लुएंस स्पेसिफिक फीचर्स ऑफ द डॉक्यूमेंट इंक्लूडिंग ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इंट्रोडक्शन इक्वेजन एंड मैथमेटिकल मॉडल्स ग्राफिक्स टेक्निकल टर्म्स एंड लेवल ऑफ डिटेल नाउ दीज कंसिडरेशन ऑफ द एटीट्यूड टूवर्ड्स यू एंड योर राइटिंग the audience type the audience purpose all these together will determine all of these factors like organization introduction technical detail etc and obviously so all these are varying factors and all these varying factors put together will determine all these different aspects of your communication these features especially the level of detail contribute to the density of the document the rate at which information is presented to the reader Density of the document basically means how complex the document is, what type of detail is present in the document and at what rate the, doc the information is being presented to the reader. If for example, the reader is someone who might not be very comfortable with a lot of information given in the document, then the density of the document will be very low. There will be very few information or very few new information given in the document. That means that the, it, it has low density. However, if you feel that the audience is such who can understand and appreciate a lot of uh, information altogether in one uh, instance, then there will be you will automatically put a lot of information load within your document. And in that case, we will say that the document has a high density. Agar बहुत ज्यादा इंफॉर्मेशन दी हुई हो तो हाई डेंसिटी डॉक्यूमेंट होता है अगर एक डॉक्यूमेंट में कम इंफॉर्मेशन हो या बहुत सिंपल इंफॉर्मेशन हो तो लो डेंसिटी डॉक्यूमेंट होता है यू नीड टू डिटर्मिन योर ऑडियंस नीड्स बाय असेसिंग देयर एक्सपर्टीज एंड देयर पर्पस इन रीडिंग द डॉक्यूमेंट इफेक्टिव टेक्निकल राइटिंग रेकग्नाइज सेवरल टाइप्स ऑफ रीडर्स रिफ्लेक्टिंग डिफरेंट लेवल्स ऑफ एक्सपर्टीज ना 
there are different types of readers and all types of readers have different levels of expertise. Just like there are different types of people in the world and all people have different types of levels of knowledge. Kuch log kisi cheez mein zyada expert hote hain, kuch log kisi aur cheez mein zyada expert hote hain. Har insaan har cheez mein expert nahi hota. To is liye jab hum apna document bhi likh rahe ho, to tab bhi humhe yeh sochna hooga ke jis ne is document ko pandna hai, woh is particular subject mein kitna expert hai. Uh, so, there will be different levels of expertise and these will range from somebody being an expert or somebody could be a technician or a manager or they could be lay persons or we could be writing for mixed audiences composed of one or more of these, uh, these four. Let us have a look at what we mean when we talk about writing for experts, who exactly experts are and what do we need to do when we are writing for them. There are two different types of experts. There are general experts and specific experts. Both kinds are readers with extensive technical knowledge of the document's subject matter. Now, when we say that somebody is an expert, obviously that means that they know a lot of what the subject is. So, therefore, they will know a lot of what your document is talking about, especially the technical detail. An expert is one who knows the technical details. But still, there are two types of experts. There will be general and specific experts. Let us have a look at the difference between the two. Uh, general experts possess extensive knowledge about a field in general, but they may be unfamiliar with particular technical terms, specific equipment or recent advances in your document subject matter. Now, obviously, general experts have a different level of knowledge from specific ex experts. Uh, general experts may, may know things in general, they know enough about the technical uh, aspects of the uh, document, but they might not know specific technical terms or in-depth details. Whereas specific experts share or surpass your knowledge about a document subject matter. Specific experts will be those who will probably know at least as much as you, if not more, because they are specifics, uh, they, they are specific experts in that field they will definitely know a lot of the technical terms. So, you will not need to define them for these people. Experts, whether they are general or specific experts, read documents, especially technical documents for a variety of purposes. Firstly, they read them to maintain and expand their own general expertise or to obtain specific answers to their own research and writing or to evaluate a document's technical or scientific content. Now, they could also be reading them for a combination of all of these three purposes. They do not have to be uh, separate purposes. Uh, a lot of the times the purposes do overlap as well. There are different strategies uh, when you are writing for experts. If your audience consists solely of specific experts, you may not need to give extensive background or define key technical terms or acronyms. If uh, you are writing for specific experts and you know that the readers are going to be specific experts, then a lot of the times you do not really need to define concepts or terms because it is understood that those experts do know them and they are aware of them. You also do not need to expand on any acronyms or abbreviations that uh, you have used because again it is understood that the experts would know what you are talking about. However, if your audience includes general experts, then you should provide sufficient background information and define any terms that they might be unfamiliar with. You will do this because general experts might be familiar with the area or might be experts in the area in general, but they not, might not be familiar with the specific concepts that you are talking about or they might not at least know so much detail about the specific concepts that you are talking about. So, then if you feel that this the audience is going to be, a gener, uh, going to be of general experts, then you should define any terms, any technical terms that you are talking about, but not in a lot of detail. You do not have to go to the root of them because they are still experts and they do have enough background knowledge, but you would need to define the specific terms that you are using. Uh, you will not also just present a concept to an expert. You will also need to explain the parts and processes in detail. Obviously, since they are experts, they will understand the processes and the details that you will explain. So, uh, you should go into detail about the explanations, about the parts, the processes, how something will happen, uh, what needs to be done, what the different levels of um, in, in the process would be 
to the expert because it's understood that when you are doing so, they will understand. You might not be doing this if you're writing for uh, people who are not experts because it, for them, the purpose would be different and they might not w need to know the processes and the different parts. But experts will need to know and they will understand as well. Now, when you're writing for technicians, technicians are people who construct, operate and fix things. For example, an office worker who is an expert in publishing is a technician and so is the person who repairs your telephone or washing machine. Technicians are experts in what they do, but they might not be experts in other things, in things that they do not do. And the way technicians vary from experts is that technicians are actually handling things themselves. An expert might be someone who has the knowledge about something, but might not be handling the actual applicability of that thing himself or herself. Whereas a technician knows uh, how to use and operate things and is actually actively doing it as well. Uh, the techni uh, technicians have different levels of knowledge. They are often more expert than anyone else in how a particular thing works or why it does not work. They are also usually familiar with the common technical terms associated with the devices they use and the processes they perform. However, they may not be familiar with general or abstract concepts about a device or a process. Now, the technicians are experts, as I said earlier, but they might not know the theory of something. They would know in, in great detail about the practice of something, but not why it happens. Okay? For example, if somebody is a technician uh, related to computers, they would know how to fix a computer, how to hook it up, how to network it, but they might not know the background detail of why for example, the circuits work the way that they do. He will know how the circuits work, but not the why of it. Technicians will have uh, uh, a variety of purposes for reading technical and scientific documents. Firstly, they will uh, want to read them to learn how to perform particular tasks. Now, if a technician is an expert in something, but does not know how to perform a particular task, then he will need to look at a manual or a document or a scientific technical report or specifically a manual to learn how to perform that specific task within his field of expertise. Uh, for example, coming back to the computer example, if a technician is an expert in computers and he knows how to fix most problems related to computers, but there are specific problems or one specific problem that he or she does not know about, then they will need to read up on it in order to learn how to fix a particular problem that is causing them confusion. They will also read uh, scientific and technical documents to learn how to, uh, as I said, solve particular problems or perform particular tasks and to learn about new devices and procedures relevant to their particular tasks. Now, there may be new things, new devices, new processes coming up in their field that they are not familiar with. So, then they will need to read up more to learn what new developments have taken place and what new devices uh, have come in and how they can use them and operate them. They will also uh, read to acquire and expand background knowledge helpful to the performance of their tasks. As I said, a lot of the times technicians will know how to operate, how to actually apply the knowledge, but they may not have the background knowledge, they may not know the concepts. So, they might also want to read to expand their horizons to get more information about the background of how a thing, thing works, so that they can be better when they are applying their knowledge. The different strategies when you are writing for technicians, you need to keep introductions and background information brief. This is obviously because again as I said technicians are more interested in the practice. They do not want the theory and therefore and a lot of the times they might not be qualified to understand the background theory. So therefore it is better to keep introductions uh, short, concise and to the point. Uh, uh, also, apart from the factor of understanding, a lot of the times they might not even have the time to read the background because it is not of their interest. They will not create the time. So, you would be wasting your time in writing a lengthy background. Uh, also, you need to make information accessible and we will talk about this in, uh, in a couple of seconds. You also should provide short definitions or explanations of unfamiliar terms, tools, devices or procedures.
if you feel that there are any unfamiliar terms koi aisi baatein hain ya koi aap aise concepts discuss karne lage hain jo shayad un technicians ko na pata ho ya wo pehle unko unse familiar na ho to phir aapne unko define karna hoga aur unki kuch aapko explanation deni hogi now coming back to making information accessible when appropriate you have to reduce information to instructions on how to perform a procedure or diagnose and fix a problem accessibility means that whatever information is given should be brief to the point and easily understood uh, and accessible to the reader uh, wherever possible you need to make sure that that information whatever it is that you are giving is brief concise and the reader does not have to look for it it's easily accessible they just need to open the book or open the document and it's there they can actually find it without having to search for it within a text uh, wherever possible also use graphs and tables this is again because visually graphs and tables can give the information at a quick glance ek cheez jo hame ek paragraph form mein likhi hui ho usme se hame information dhoondni padti hai पॉइंट फॉर्म में लिखी हुई हो या ग्राफ्स और टेबल्स में फैक्ट्स और फिगर्स या कोई प्रोसीजर एक्सप्लेन किया हुआ हो डायग्राम बना हुआ हो तो वो हमें समझने में बहुत आसानी होती है बनस्बत के हम उस डायग्राम की डिस्क्रिप्शन में दस जुमले हमें पढ़ने पड़े ऑल्सो यू नीड टू कीप सेक्शन एंड ओवरऑल इंस्ट्रक्शन एज शॉर्ट एज पॉसिबल अगर लंबे सेक्शन होंगे तो जाहिर है पैराग्राफ्स भी उनके अंदर ज़्यादा होंगे या लंबे होंगे और फिर उसमें इन्फॉर्मेशन जो है वो इतनी एक्सेसिबल नहीं होगी इतने आराम से समझी नहीं जा सकती ढूंढी नहीं जा सकती इसलिए बेहतर है कि आपके सेक्शंस जो हों वो जितने शॉर्ट हों उतने बेहतर हैं जितने मुख्तर हों उतने बेहतर हैं और जो इंस्ट्रक्शंस भी हैं जो आप उनको बता रहे हैं कि आपने क्यों चीज़ किस तरह करनी है उसको भी जितने आप शॉर्ट तरीके से जितने मुख्तलिफ मुख्तर तरीके से बता सकें उतना बेहतर है ऑल्सो यू नीड टू इंडेक्स एंड क्रॉस रेफरेंस मटीरियल this means that if you have been talking about material uh, previously in the document then you need to refer to it cross reference between what has been talked about earlier and what you are talking about later and indexing means that you need to maybe provide a list of uh, where each section is uh, if you see in a lot of documents manuals you have an index where there is a number of either the, the page or section and a quick guide on how to access a particular problem so it's very useful to then make an index so that the reader just needs to look at the index and go to their particular problem they don't have to read the whole document to find what they are looking for when you're writing for managers who are a completely different type of audience from technicians or experts then you need to have different rules in mind managers you will assume are busy people who need to use documents primarily as tools in making decisions because managers read and review many documents you need to be brief and to the point now managers are people who might not be expert in everything that they are doing but they will have a general knowledge of what they are doing they might be experts in one or two fields but they might be handling other fields or they might be handling other areas in which they are not experts but they do have knowledge of them uh they vary in their technical knowledge many managers especially in technical organizations are general experts in a document subject matter uh rarely however are managers specific experts in the content of a document as i said they have the subject knowledge but they might not be specific experts in that uh, subject so they are general experts um, many times but not specific experts Uh, managers usually supervise a number of projects so they may not be familiar with every recent technological advance and this is why they might want to read up on a technical uh, technical document so that they can update themselves on the technological advances that have taken place often managers are specialists in fields such as marketing or management and have little detailed technical knowledge they will uh, they will know how to manage uh technical products or market technical products but they might not know how those technical products operate or how they are made or how they can be fixed and for that they will need to rely on documentation so that at least they know what the technicians or the experts who are working under them are doing the purposes uh vary for managers in reading technical documents and scientific documents uh, they read them to aid in making decisions to assess current situations 
to maintain their general level of expertise, to evaluate projects and employees. Uh, obviously, if they have a knowledge of the technical documents that uh, they are reading or if they can understand them, it helps them in making decisions, it helps them when they are assessing current situations and uh, it obviously increases their level of expertise, but more than that it helps them evaluate what their team is doing or what is happening in their project, so that they can assess, they can evaluate and they can help in their team performing much better if they actually know what they are doing. Uh, in general, managers read for the bottom line, a concise summary of the present situation and specific recommendations for action. A lot of the times managers are not interested in all the details, they just want the bottom line, they want the end result or the, confu uh, the, the conclusion. Um, any recommendations that are present, they might not always want to look at all the detail or even if they do, they might initially be interested more in what the summary is of the document and then when they have the time, they will look at more detail. There are different strategies when you are writing for managers than when you are writing for technicians or experts. For managers, you need to distill key information into an executive summary. This is so that they can get the gist of the matter in one glance or in one summary. A uh, manager ke paas kyunki bahut different projects hote hain wo bahut kaam bahut cheezon pe kaam kar rahe hote hain unke paas itna time zaruri nahi hai ke ho ke wo har cheez ki detail padhe isliye unki attention attract karne ke liye behtar hai ke jo bhi document mein likha gaya hai usko ek summary ke taur pe shuru mein diya jaye aur phir agar unko summary interesting lagegi to phir wo aage bhi us document ki mazid tafseel padhenge in general you need to present information in order of importance jo cheez zyada important hai उसको पहले लिस्ट करें उसको उसको पहले डिस्कस करें और जो चीज़ कम इम्पॉर्टेंट है उसको बाद में लाएं क्योंकि मैनेजर्स के पास इतना टाइम नहीं है कि वो अन इम्पॉर्टेंट चीज़ को पढ़ें इसलिए अगर उनको शुरू की चीज़ें अन इम्पॉर्टेंट लगेंगी तो वो शायद आगे डॉक्यूमेंट पढ़ें ही ना और वो इम्पॉर्टेंट बात तक पहुँचें ही ना इसलिए बेहतर है कि जो इम्पॉर्टेंट बात है उसको पहले रखा जाए और जहाँ तक इम्पॉर्टेंस की का सवाल है ये भी ख्याल में रखा जाए कि जो इम्पॉर्टेंट चीज आपको इम्पॉर्टेंट लग रही है वो जरूरी नहीं है कि मैनेजर को इम्पॉर्टेंट लगे इसलिए ये भी ध्यान में रखा जाए कि मैनेजर को क्या चीज इम्पॉर्टेंट लगेगी उसके लिए क्या चीज ज्यादा इम्पॉर्टेंट है उस चीज को शुरू में प्रेजेंट किया जाए ऑल्सो यू नीड टू एम्फोसाइज इन्फॉर्मेशन दैट विल एड इन मेकिंग डिसीजन खास तौर पर अगर कोई ऐसे आप चाह रहे हैं कि कोई वो डिसीजन लें या कोई एक्शन uh, इस तरह कर लें कोई चेंज करें कंपनी में तो उस उस इन्फॉर्मेशन uh, को जो कि हेल्प करेगी इस डिसीजन लेने में उसको शुरू में रखा जाए या उसको एम्फोसाइज किया जाए बेशक उसको आप विजुअली एम्फोसाइज करें या इस तरह एम्फोसाइज करें कि उसका जिक्र पहले करें या उसको बुलेट uh, पॉइंट करें या बोल्ड में करें या टेबल और ग्राफ में उसको हाईलाइट करें लेकिन उस चीज़ को एम्फोसाइज करें ताकि मैनेजर जो है उसको उसकी इम्पोर्टेंस का पता चले और उसको आसानी भी हो उस इन्फॉर्मेशन को एब्जॉर्ब करने में और फिर वो डिसीजन आराम से ले सकें यू नीड टू प्रजेंट सफिशेंट बैकग्राउंड इन्फॉर्मेशन इन योर डॉक्यूमेंट A lot of the times, it's very important for managers to know why you're saying something and what had happened to make you uh, come to the come to uh, writing the document, or what had prompted you to write the document, because it's important for them so that they can take a decision, which will uh, be based on what you have suggested in your document. Therefore, it's important that they know the background, that they have some background information. Maybe it's something that you talk a process that you're talking about. So then you need to explain. how that process happened and now before you start talking about the changes that you want in the process you also need to summarize all recommendations for action in your conclusion you may in your whole document have written about given an introduction given a background what had happened why it had happened what needs to be done but in your summary and your conclusion you need to highlight what needs to be done because a lot of, lot of the times the managers will just look might just look at the executive summary in the beginning briefly glass and the introduction and then say okay let's come to the point what do you want me to do what is the conclusion you need so therefore it's important to highlight the action that you want in the conclusion bahut bar ye hoga ki manager puri report ya pura document padhenge hi nahi wo sirf ye kahenge haan ji iska matlab kya hai hame kya isme se chahiye decision kya lena hai hame ye bataye bottom line bataye as we talked about earlier they need to know the bottom line so therefore it's important that in your in your conclusion you have all your recommendations preferably in point form uh you also need to segment information to allow easy reading of parts of the document 
the manager is not going to sit for hours and read a long essay type document. You need to divide your document in segments, in sections, give, give clear headings, make clear sections so that the manager can skip to the section of their interest or the manager can just look at the headings and have an idea of what is in each section and then decide if they want to look at the detail or not. You also need to, if necessary, put long technical explanations into appendices. Uh, as I mentioned, managers are not experts or technical experts. So if there is any technical information that you feel is important to be included in the document, then it should come in an appendix at the end of the document. Within the document, you will just refer to it as an appendix. For example, you will say, when you're talking about technical information, then you will say, see appendix A or see appendix 1, and then attach any technical details, diagrams, facts, figures, which might be confusing to read at that point or which might break the flow of reading, you will put them as an appendix. Agar hum sari technical detail beech mein uh, include karenge document ke, to bahut baar ye hoga ki jo manager hai, wo padte mein ya confuse ho jayenge, kyunke wo us cheez ke expert na ho, shayad, ya ye hai ki unke paas time nahi hoga, to wo sochenge, achha, ye to bahut lamba hai, isko baad mein padhenge, aur phir wo cheez reh jayegi. Is liye better hai ki wo jo technical details zyada elaborate agar hai, to unko aap us paper ke aakhir mein alag se attach karein, aur sirf unka hawala dein paper ke andar. Also, uh, try to use graphs to summarize information. Uh, you, the use of graphs, figures, makes things more visual and it makes things easy to understand and see in a nutshell. And explain any unfamiliar terms that you might be talking about. They might be uh, technical terms, so you need to then explain them if you feel that the manager will find them unfamiliar. If obviously that you know that the manager is an expert in this particular field, then you don't need to go into these explanations. So you need to decide what needs to be explained and what doesn't based on what you know about your manager. When you're writing for lay persons, uh, a lay person is one who does not possess the technical knowledge of an expert or a technician uh, and also one who might not have maybe any idea of, um, of that field, maybe not even a manager. Uh, and therefore, there will be a different way of writing for lay people. All of us read some documents as laypersons. No one is an expert in all fields. Even if we are experts in our field, even if you are a technician or if you are an expert or general specific expert or a manager in a, with a particular area, uh, you may be, you will be definitely a layperson in other areas. If you are a computer expert, then you will be a layperson when it comes to uh, talking about maybe language. So then when you when you talk when uh, if somebody is writing in technical terms about language or uh, maths then they need to keep in mind that this person is an expert in the area of computers but not in the area of mathematics uh, lay persons will have uh, different levels of knowledge you uh, you need to understand that a lay person has uh, has knowledge but not knowledge which is of a particular technicality. So do not assume that a layperson has a technical background. Unless you know that all members of your audience will understand a technical term or concept, explain it carefully using examples and analogies with which the reader is familiar. Now if you feel that all the people who will be reading your document uh, know the concept that you are talking about, then you do not need to explain it or you do not need to highlight it. But if you feel that uh, some of them will be familiar with it, but some of them will not know the details. Then you need to use examples. You need to use analogies, uh, show them similar situations or similar examples so that they can understand what it is that you're talking about. Some lay audiences can be classified as novices, people who do not yet possess technical expertise in a field, but are in the process of acquiring it. Now, um, Novices will be people who are learning. They might be new to that field, but they will eventually become experts. So, but at the moment, because they are new to the field, because they are novices, they are uh, lay, lay people. They are aspiring to be experts in that field. Technical textbooks at different levels, for example, are written to audiences that are starting out as laypersons, but may become experts. A lot of the people, if they, if 
uh, if they do not know about their field, they will obviously need to read first to become experts in that field. So, for example, textbooks then are written for novices, but then those novices later become experts. There are different purposes uh, for which laypersons read technical and scientific documents. They read them to expand their general knowledge. As a layperson, I might not be uh, an expert in computers, but a lot of documents related to computers I might just read or glance at because I would like to expand my knowledge about them, about them, about computers. That does not mean that I will read, I will be interested in reading a lot of technic technicalities about computers, but if there is a newspaper article related to the use of computers or advances in computer science, I would be interested in reading them even though I am a lay person as far as computer, uh, computers are concerned. Also, uh, lay persons would use them to help uh, make decisions as citizens, consumers and investors. A lot of the times we are given uh, information about a specific field as lay persons, but that helps us in uh, finding out more about those areas and also in making decisions as citizens. A lot of the times as investors, we might, I might not be, uh, again going back to the same example, I might not be an expert in computers, but depending on what I read maybe in a newspaper or in a company report, I might be interested in investing in IBM for example, because I know enough about it to be confident that I might want to invest in this company. Uh, also laypersons would want to uh, read technical documents to learn how to use a device or perform a procedure. If I buy a new television, I may not be an expert in how the television works, I may not even be a manager. In a, in a television company or a technician who knows how to put all the circuits together, but I would want to read the uh, user's manual, the handbook of that television so that I know how to operate it and how to use it, even though I am a lay person. That is what the document uh, documentation is made for. The manual is specifically designed for lay people who, so that they can understand how to hook the different parts or the cables, etc., and how to tune the channels but the manual does not give the technicalities of what actually happens within the television set while I am tuning the channels. That information would be for technicians. Or I might want to read a document to become an expert. Now if I have aspirations to become an expert in uh, the technology that is used within a television, then again I would start off by reading basic documentation and then read more documentation related to computers and then eventually become an expert. So, even though I start off as a lay person, I might eventually become an expert. So, to her lay person jo hai, uske bhi purposes for reading a specific document, wo jo purposes hain, wo jo wajuhat hain, jiske wajah se wo ek document ko padhenge, wo mukhtalif ho sakti hain. Aur un mukhtalif wajuhat ke madde nazar, unko madde nazar rakke hi aap apna document tayar karenge. There are different strategies when you are writing for lay, lay people. Uh, Depending on what the purpose is for reading, depending on what type of lay people they are, you will use different strategies. You will present extensive background information in your introduction. You will organize information from the familiar to the unfamiliar. Now, this is very important. If you start off with unfamiliar information, it will put the readers off. Agar bahut information shuru mein hi aisi hogi jo mushkil lagegi reader ko, kyunke wo ek lay person hai, usko iski background knowledge nahi hai. तो वो घबरा जाएंगे डर जाएंगे और वो आगे पढ़ेंगे ही नहीं तो इसलिए शुरू उस चीज से करना चाहिए जिससे वो पहले से फेमिलियर हों जिससे वो कंफर्टेबल हों और फिर आहिस्ता आहिस्ता उनको अनफेमिलियर कॉन्सेप्ट्स एक्सप्लेन करने चाहिए या देने चाहिए ऑल्सो यू विल सिंप्लीफाई इन्फॉर्मेशन टू द लेवल सफिशियंट फॉर द ऑडियंस पर्पज इन यूजिंग द डॉक्यूमेंट अगर आपको लगे कि जो इन्फॉर्मेशन आप दे रहे हैं वो बहुत कॉम्प्लिकेटेड है और इस ऑडियंस जो है जो पढ़ने वाले हैं वो उनको इस चीज की अभी इस वक्त जरूरत नहीं है वो ये डॉक्यूमेंट इस इंफॉर्मेशन के लिए नहीं पढ़ रहे हैं उनको इस डॉक्यूमेंट को पढ़ते वक्त इतनी कॉम्प्लिकेटेड इंफॉर्मेशन नहीं चाहिए फॉर एग्जांपल कमिंग बैक टू द एग्जांपल ऑफ द टेलीविजन अगर आप एक इंस्ट्रक्शन मैनुअल लिख रहे हैं कि उस टेलीविजन को किस तरह ऑपरेट करना है तो उस टाइम पे उस ऑडियंस को पढ़ने वाले को इस चीज की जरूरत नहीं है कि ये टेलीविजन के अंदर सर्किट्स जो है वो किस तरह ज्वाइन हुए हुए हैं इसलिए आप वो जो इंफॉर्मेशन है उसको एक सिंप्लीफाइड तौर पे बताएंगे कि, अग, कि अगर आप प्लग गलत लगाएंगे तो सर्किट्स खराब हो सकते हैं लेकिन आपको उसकी डिटेल बताने की जरूरत नहीं है कि सर्किट्स में एग्जैक्टली exactly होगा क्या कि वो खराब होंगे यू ऑल्सो नीड टू एक्सप्लेन ऑल टेक्निकल टर्म्स 
जो भी आप टेक्निकल टर्म्स इस्तेमाल करें जो भी ऐसी टर्मिनोलॉजी हो जो कि बहुत ज़्यादा टेक्निकल हो उसको आप एक्सप्लेन करें क्योंकि ज़रूरी नहीं है कि वो उस ऑडियंस को ये पता हो कि इसका मतलब क्या है ऑल्सो यू विल नीड टू इलस्ट्रेट एंड एक्सप्लेन टेक्निकल टर्म्स एंड कॉन्सेप्ट विद एनालॉजीज फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू विल नीड टू से थिंग्स लाइक योर हार्ड डिस्क इज़ लाइक एन एटिक इफ इट इज़ टू फुल यू मे हैव ट्रबल रिट्रीविंग ए स्पेसिफिक आइटम एनालॉजीज़ का मतलब ये है कि आप जो कॉन्सेप्ट बता रहे हैं उसको आप किसी ऐसी चीज़ से कंपेयर करें जिससे ऑडियंस ज़्यादा फेमिलियर हों अगर आपको लगता है कि एक कॉन्सेप्ट ऑडियंस के लिए मुश्किल है तो उसको आप किसी ऐसी चीज़ से कंपेरिजन दें जो कि उनके इर्द गिर्द उनकी एवरी डे लाइफ में वो इस्तेमाल कर रहे हों या वो देख रहे हों ताकि वो उससे उसको कंपेयर कर सकें और फिर उनको समझ आ जाए कि हाँ इसका ये मतलब है या आप उस चीज़ को आसान बनाने के लिए आप कोई छोटा सा एनेक्टोड कोई हल्का सा जोक कोई ह्यूमर भी इस्तेमाल कर सकते हैं ताकि उस उनको वो चीज़ याद रहे और समझ आए वेन यू राइटिंग फॉर अ मिक्सड ऑडियंस वी टॉक्ट अबाउट एक्सपर्ट्स टेक्नीशियंस मैनेजर्स ले पर्सन एक्सेट्रा वी कैन ऑल्सो भी राइटिंग फॉर अ मिक्सड ऑडियंस ज़रूरी नहीं है कि हर चीज़ जो हम लिखें वो हमें पता ही हो कि ये सिर्फ टेक्नीशियंस ही पढ़ेंगे या सिर्फ एक्सपर्ट्स या मैनेजर्स ही पढ़ेंगे बहुत से ऐसे डॉक्यूमेंट्स होते हैं जो हर तरह के लोग पढ़ते हैं so therefore when you are uh, writing for um, a mixed audience you need to be clear that the document may be read by readers with different levels of expertise some some of the audience will be ex- will be at a higher level of expertise than other audience some uh, some uh, some of the audience may be ex- uh, specific experts whereas some of the audience may be completely la- complete lay persons so then it becomes slightly more complicated in how you target that audience computer documentation for instance may be written for experts who are familiar with all the hardware and software processes involved technicians who will install and support the application a manager who may be deciding whether or not to purchase a software and lay persons who may occasionally use it now this is although it's t- computer documentation it may be targeted for all these different people usi documentation ko dekh ke ek expert jo hai wo usko uh, shayad banayega उसी डॉक्यूमेंटेशन को देख के एक टेक्नीशियन जो है वो उसको इंस्टॉल करेगा उसी डॉक्यूमेंटेशन को देख के एक मैनेजर ये डिसीजन करेगा कि मैंने इसको ख़रीदना है कि नहीं अपनी कंपनी में इंस्टॉल करने के लिए ये कंप्यूटर हार्डवेयर और एक ले पर्सन जो उसको इस्तेमाल करेगा वो भी शायद उसी को उसी डॉक्यूमेंटेशन को पढ़े तो इसलिए उसमें डिफरेंट डिफरेंट ऑडियंसेज हैं और उस हिसाब से आपने उस डॉक्यूमेंटेशन को लिखना है सो दे फोर दे विल भी डिफरेंट स्ट्रैटीज वैन यूर राइटिंग फॉर मिक्सड ऑडियंसेज If appropriate, you need to create separate documents for each audience type. टाइप जाहिर है अगर आपके पास चॉइस है और अगर आप कर सकते हैं तो सबसे तो बेहतर यही होगा कि आप हर ऑडियंस टाइप के लिए डिफरेंट किस्म का डॉक्यूमेंट बनाएं या कम अज़ कम उस एक डॉक्यूमेंट के अंदर डिफरेंट सेक्शंस करें जो कि हर ऑडियंस टाइप के लिए हों एग्जेक्टिव मैनेजर्स के लिए अलग सेक्शन हो टेक्नीशियंस के लिए एक्सपर्ट्स के लिए अलग सेक्शन हो ले पर्सनस के लिए अलग सेक्शन हो तो फिर आपके लिए एज ए राइटर आपके लिए आसानी है क्योंकि आपको फिर आप हर सेक्शन को आप पर्टिकुलर ऑडियंस के लिए टारगेट करेंगे हाउ एवर इफ दैट्स नॉट पॉसिबल देन यू नीड टू ऑब्वियसली फाइंड अदर वेज देन यू नीड टू मेक श्योर दैट द लैंग्वेज दैट यू यूजिंग इज एक्सेसिबल टू ऑल डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ ऑडियंसेज यू शुड ऑल्सो यूज एन एग्जेक्टिव समरी टू प्रजेंट द जिस्ट ऑफ योर डॉक्यूमेंट इन अंडरस्टैंडेबल लैंग्वेज एक एग्जेक्टिव समरी जिस तरह हम मैनेजर्स के लिए एग्जेक्टिव समरी बनाएंगे उसी तरह आप मिक्स ऑडियंस के लिए भी एक एग्जेक्टिव समरी बनाएंगे ताकि उसका उस डॉक्यूमेंट का जो मेन आइडिया है जो जिस्ट है वो जल्दी से आपके ऑडियंस को समझ आ जाए इफ एनी ऑफ यू रीडर्स विल नॉट बी एक्सपर्ट्स और टेक्नीशियंस प्लेस ऑल लेंथ ही टेक्निकल डिस्कशन इन अपेंडिस एंड रेफर टू दैम इन द मेन बॉडी जिस तरह हमने पहले बात की थी मैनेजर्स के हवाले से उसी तरह अगर आपको लगे कि आपके मिक्सड ऑडियंस में बहुत से ऐसे लोग हैं जिनको ये टेक्निकल डिटेल जो आप बताना चाह रहे हैं या दिखाना चाह रहे हैं समझ नहीं आएगी तो उस टेक्निकल डिटेल को फिर आप उस डॉक्यूमेंट की बैक पे अपेंडिक्स के तौर पे लगाएं ऑल्सो यू शुड सेगमेंट द डॉक्यूमेंट इनटू सेक्शंस सो दैट डिफरेंट ऑडियंसेस कैन रीड डिफरेंट पार्ट्स दिस इज एज आई सेट बिफोर यू नीड टू पुट इन इफ प्रेफरेबल इफ पॉसिबल इन फैक्ट पुट इट इन डिफरेंट पार्ट सो दैट द ऑडियंसेज कैन चूज विच पार्ट दे आर लुकिंग एट Also, you need to include in the front matter or introduction a short discussion of what sections are appropriate to each type of reader and for what purposes. It might be better to then give a brief introduction of each section in the beginning, 
so that the readers just need to look at the beginning and get a, a short detail of what section is appropriate for for them so they need to just there might be small paragraphs or two or three lines about each type of reader and where they will find the information that is of interest to them so shuru mein hi introductory session section mein hi agar aap har reader ke liye ko bata dein ki aapke matlab ki detail is section mein hai to unke liye aasani ho jayegi also you should explain all technical terms thoroughly in any section that may be read by a lay reader if you feel that in parts of your sections you have are using technical terms and that section will be read by lay people by people who are not uh, experts then you need to explain those technical terms to jo experts us section ko padh rahe hain wo us explanation ko skip kar denge ya ignore kar denge lekin kam as kam jo lay people us uh, um, section ko padh rahe hain unke liye usko samajhne mein aasani hogi also you should in include an exhaustive glossary section explaining all technical terms in either the front matter or the end matter जाहिर है जब आपके मिक्स्ड ऑडियंस है उसमें एक्सपर्ट्स भी हैं टेक्नीशियंस मैनेजर्स ले पीपल सब हैं तो फिर और अगर आपकी बहुत ज़्यादा टेक्निकल टर्म्स इस्तेमाल हो रही हैं तो फिर बेहतर ये है कि आपने एक ग्लॉसरी बनाई हुई हो या एक इंडेक्स हो उन ट, उस टर्मिनोलॉजी की ताकि जितनी टेक्निकल टर्म्स हैं उनकी आप डेफिनेशन या उनकी एक्सप्लेशन आप एक लिस्ट के तौर पर लगा के एल्फेबेटिकल ऑर्डर में वो बैक पे या शुरू में इंक्लूड कर लें ताकि फिर जहाँ अगर टेक्स्ट के अंदर पैसेज के अंदर वो टेक्निकल टर्म्स आती हैं तो सिर्फ जो रीडर है उसको जाके उस ग्लॉसरी में उन टेक्निकल टर्म्स की डेफिनेशन या मीनिंग्स देखने पड़े दी रीडर्स ऑफ टेक्निकल एंड साइंटिफिक राइटिंग वट एवर देर लेवल ऑफ एक्सपर्टीज रीड अ डॉक्यूमेंट फॉर थ्री जनरल पर्पजेज दे रीड दैम टू एक्वायर इंफॉर्मेशन टू हेल्प मेक डिसीजन एंड टू लर्न हाउ टू डू समथिंग नाउ टू एक्वायर इंफॉर्मेशन Readers at all levels of expertise read technical documents to acquire information. जो भी level हो उनकी expertise का बेशक वो बहुत specific uh, experts हों या lay persons हों कि कुछ ना कुछ तो उनको information मिलती है हर document से और वो इसीलिए पढ़ते हैं उस document को कि उनकी knowledge में इजाफा हो Experts read current documents in their own fields to maintain their level of expertise and read documents in related fields to increase the breadth of their knowledge. जो अपनी फील्ड के डॉक्यूमेंट्स uh, हैं उनको एक्सपर्ट्स पढ़ेंगे अपनी एक्सपर्टीज बढ़ाने के लिए जो रिलेटेड फील्ड्स के हैं जो डायरेक्टली उनकी फील्ड के नहीं हैं उनको वो डॉक्यूमेंट्स उन डॉक्यूमेंट्स को वो इसलिए पढ़ेंगे कि थोड़ी सी उनकी नॉलेज के उनके हॉराइजन्स खुले हों थोड़े से उनको इर्द गिर्द का भी अंदाजा रहे फर्दर मोर एक्सपर्ट्स और टेक्नीशियंस इन वन फील्ड आर ऑफन नॉविस इन इन अदर फील्ड एंड रीड डॉक्यूमेंट्स टू एक्वायर अ बेसिक अंडरस्टैंडिंग Managers read to acquire both the general and the specific information necessary for them to supervise their staffs effectively and to function well in their organization. We've talked about this before. This is th there are different purposes that people read for, and this is basically I am now giving you a summary of uh, why these people may want to read specific documents. Lay persons read scientific and technical documents to acquire general knowledge about a subject, or as novices attempting to become experts. to help make a decision that's another purpose readers at all levels of expertise read documents to make decisions just like they read them to make uh, to acquire information in the same way based on what they have read they will be making decisions an expert may read a technical study to decide whether or not to conduct a specific experiment or to use a new design element an expert may read a technical study to decide whether or not to conduct a specific experiment or to use a new design element a manager may need to make or approve a decision a uh, technicians use documents to decide on the selection of specific hardware or software and to de determine the best procedure for performing a task lay persons may read documents to help select a particular product or investment they uh, a uh, document is also read to learn how to do something all readers whatever their level of expertise sometimes read instructions to help them perform various tasks they might read instructions to learn how they will perform that task or how they will perform that action for example a manager may read a document to learn how to use new budgeting software an expert may read a document to learn how to use a new device uh, and and so on uh, a lay person may also be using uh, a document to to learn how to use uh, something you also need to be familiar with 
the uh, reader's attitude towards you and your organization when you are writing for them. If your audience views you as an expert, in some situations you may not need to offer lengthy explanations for your conclusions and recommendations. For example, when we go to a doctor, we do not always ask for a detailed explanation of a diagnosis or procedure. Agar aapko pata hai ke aap apne audience ki nazar mein ek expert hai, to phir aapko itti detailed unko explanation ya justification dene ki zarurat nahi hai ke aap aage kya karne ja rahe hain ya kya kehne ja rahe hain. Jis tarah bhi maine doctor ka hawala diya, hum as a mariz jab hum ek doctor ke paas jate hain to hume pata hai ke wo doctor expert hai, to phir hum unse poochte hi nahi hain ke aap hi hume dawai kyun de rahe hain. इसी तरह जब आपके ऑडियंस को पता है कि आप एक्सपर्ट हैं तो वो आपसे नहीं पूछे पूछना पूछ रहे हैं या आपसे नहीं सुनना चाह रहे हैं कि आप उनको ये इंस्ट्रक्शंस क्यों दे रहे हैं इट्स इनफ फॉर देम दैट यू आर एन एक्सपर्ट एंड दे विल देन रीड व्हाट यू हैव रिटन विदाउट क्वेश्चनिंग यू सिमिलरली अ रीडर ऑफ अ टेक्निकल मैनुअल रिटन बाय द मैन्युफैक्चरर इज लाइकली टू एक्सेप्ट अ स्टेटमेंट ऑफ द पॉसिबल कॉजेस ऑफ अ सर्टेन टाइप ऑफ एरर विदाउट फर्दर एक्सप्लेनेशन बिकॉज़ द रीडर ट्रस्ट्स द एक्यूरेसी ऑफ द मैन्युफैक्चरर नो एक्सप्लेनेशन इज नेसेसरी on the other hand if the audience does not know you or does not consider you an expert or if the reader has had past negative experience with you or your organization the document should include extensive explanations of your conclusions and recommendations to create trust and establish credibility zahir hai agar aapke audience ko aap pe trust nahi hai to aapko wo trust unse jeetna hai aur phir aapko explanations kuch deni padengi Also, we need to consider audience interest in the subject. Your audience's interest in your document's content will affect its organization. If your audience is already interested in your subject, you may be able to shorten your introduction. If your audience is not interested in your subject, or if you do not know the level of their interest, explain why the material in the document is important to the reader. Uh, another thing to consider is audience attitude towards subject. If your audience initially may be hostile to your major conclusions. you may want to present the problem first then your analysis then your conclusions or recommendations agar aapko lagta hai ki jo aapne conclusions deni hain wo shayad audience ko pasand na aaye ya wo initially unko accept na kare to phir aapko problem pehle batani hogi usko analyze karna hoga phir conclusion dena hoga taki unko taki samajh aaye ki sachmuch ek problem thi aur uska ye conclusion hai on the other hand if you believe your audience to be receptive to your conclusions especially if your audience is a manager begin with conclusions and recommendations if you feel that your audience is going to have no problem with what conclusions you are giving then you don't need to give the background problem and uh, give the analysis document density refers to the amount type detail complexity and rate of information presented to the reader the density appropriate to any document is determined by its audience and the ways in which the audience will use it matching the density of information to your audience is crucial for the success of any technical document we we talked about density earlier as well uh, the more the information in the document the more dense the document is so basically in this lecture you learned to target your audience by identifying audience type characteristics and level of expertise you learned to determine your audience's needs by assessing their expertise and their purpose in reading the document and you learned what document density is and how to determine it in your document that's all for this lecture on audience analysis until next time allah hafiz